All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are back with another bonus content video. Uh, we have another um, Irish uh, content creator uh, who's putting out uh, content on the Irish language and helping people learn it. Um, and this is Dane. I'll let him introduce himself uh, briefly here and we'll get into some questions for him. Gareth Margot. Um, hello, everybody. It's Misha Dane. I am Dane. And it's great to be here on this channel. Um, I appreciate the invitation. And I'm based in Wexford in Ireland. And I make uh, regular videos on the Irish language. And while I'm not a native speaker, and I, I would never claim to be, I would have a fairly good level of Irish. I've been speaking since four years of age. And basically, I just love the language. I love sharing it. And it's it's a it's a key part of of not just Irish people, but I would say of European people as well, because all languages are so vital. Um, so that's me. Um, it's great to be here, and thanks for having me. Oh, tough out to it. Um, so let's see. Um, so first off, you know, what's your background with Gaelic? Um, you know, what got you started, or or how's it been involved in your life till now? The first time Gwelga really touched me was when I was about six or seven years of age in a small country school called Marshallstown, and it's just outside in Escorty County, Wexford. And I remember becoming completely infatuated with the stories of Oisin and Neve and their journeys to Tirnanog and the land of the Utes and Oisin's father, Fionn, and all that kind of stuff. That's when I think the magic first hit me. Because that particular school was fantastic at promoting Irish. It wasn't a Gael school or anything like that. It was just a regular mm -hmm. primary school. But I remember I oh, had two, two yeah, I had two teachers at various times. They were both from County Kerry, uh, which is in the very southwest corner of Ireland in Munster. And they just gave me that. Um, I suppose they started a light with the language. And I was never particularly brilliant at Irish in school. Um, I'm not going to come on here and claim I'm some kind of A straight A student but I was always good at it and I never disliked it some people in my class had it had their hang-ups about languages and all that I always loved well I oh I, I, sorry I don't mean I I'm kind of think talking the present tense there I love it now I always liked it I was reasonably mm -hmm. good at it so that was in primary school and moving on then to secondary school um again I I did well in Irish um Unfortunately, I didn't do the higher level Irish in my Leaving Cert. And I know we have a question on the Leaving Cert later, so I won't, I won't get into that now. <laughs> but my background with Irish is basically that I did it all through school. And at various times in my life after school, I've been returning to it, but with sort of gaps in between. So, for example, I returned to it in 2005 um, when I met some other Irish speakers. And then I was re relearning it for about six months or eight months. Then I completely just did nothing for a couple of years. And then in 2008, 2009, I had a new neighbor who moved in next door. And we started talking Irish regularly in the evenings. He, he would have had a much higher standard than me at the time. And then there was a bit of a bit of a gap before I eventually started the channel um, a couple of years ago. So my background has been hit and miss. And this current period since November 2017 has been the most consistent period with Irish where I've had the YouTube channel and following other creators as well and watching TG Carr and Radio Na Gwilfachta. So mm. that in a nutshell would be my background with Gwilga. Awesome. Inta. Um, so yeah, you mentioned the leaving cert and I know that's a big deal for a lot of people, sometimes a big headache for a lot of people. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, it can be a bit different depending on people's situation, where they live, what school they go to, uh, and all that. So what was your uh, experience with it? My experience of the Leaving Cert was was good overall. Uh, just, just speaking about Irish specifically, I always regretted that I, I didn't do the higher level Irish during the Leaving Cert. And it really comes down to this one word, and winning. So winning means what well, do you know what it means maybe i should ask you first before i tell you do you know what winning means 
It sounds familiar, but I, I can't place it right now. Confidence. Ah, okay. So yeah. When I was 16, 17, I, I was incredibly shy. I wouldn't be putting myself in front of a camera like this. And to cut a long story short, I didn't have the confidence to do higher level Irish. I thought this was the language that fluent uh, people speak, people that come from the Gwale schools and come into sec regular secondary schools. And that's, yeah. I always regretted that because I would have got more points um, if I had done it. And I suppose yeah. when you're 16, 17, you don't have that same confidence that you have when you're in your 30s and 40s like I am now. So I found the course doable. The ordinary level Irish, I mean, it's there's basically three levels of Irish in the Leaving Cert. You have foundation, which is very basic. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's as basic as you can get. Then ordinary level, which is not bad. It's kind of a bit of conversational. You do some poems and essays. And then higher level, which which is a, which is actually a, a decent standard exam. So I found the I found the the course good. I found it interesting. I wouldn't say I loved it, but I certainly uh, did not look forward to it. If that makes sense, I always mm -hmm. I always well, it's a, I saw it's a Irish. Test. On, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I always remember I had a wonderful teacher called um. That I always to this day I'd still call him Mister O'Neill. Uh, mm. from the he's from the westernmost part of Kerry again so like a lot of my teachers in school just seem to come from Kerry and I just found him such a gentleman I mm. found him he was like six feet seven inches but he was so gentle soft-spoken and he never really forced much on us he kind of had a good knack of giving us the information and leaving it up to us and although I I wouldn't say I, I I nailed it. I think I got a C or something like that, which is which in simple language is about 55, 60%. Mm. But I always was left with a, a good memory of Irish because he was such a gentleman um, in the class. In fact, all my Irish teachers over the years were, were good people, good teachers. Oh, that's good. And I, I was always left with good memories, you see. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's really important because a lot of students... Yeah. It, depending on the teacher, not so much the information or what they're learning, but depending on the teacher can have a bad memory of a certain subject. Yes. Um, and I, I'm that way with, uh, let's see, what was it? It was a uh, geometry. Yeah. So uh, I had a geometry teacher that was very, very difficult uh, mm -hmm. to, to work with and to be around. Um, so yeah, that, that tainted my entire yeah. view of that subject. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't have to use it that much in my daily life because of my career and the path that I chose for that. But yeah, looking back on it, it's definitely not something I would want to retake <laughs> because yeah. of my past experience. So yeah. Yeah. There's a saying that I heard recently from another, from an, another Irish teacher I came across last year that teachers in school, um, regarding the student the student will will never remember everything they studied in school about a certain subject mm -hmm. but they'll always remember how the teacher made them feel yes that's the key thing so you might not remember everything about geometry but you'll remember how that teacher made you feel every day most days yeah and our memories are more tightly linked to emotion than yes. they are to the facts themselves so yeah, yeah. definitely yeah Absolutely. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, you felt like uh, you wanted to do more with that. So did you eventually do something more with that? Yes. I made the decision about two years ago that I was going to repeat my Leaving Cert. Now, okay. I made this decision in 2018 as a 38-year-old as a person because, one, I wanted to kind of redo the wrongs of 1998 when I did my leaving cert I wanted to because it was something that was always nagging at me over the years it, it would never have been like on my mind every day but it was one of those things kind of compartmentalized in the back of my mind so I wanted to do it for me but I also wanted to repeat my leaving cert higher level obviously I'm, I'm saying here like mm -hmm. of course I wanted to repeat my higher level uh leaving cert Irish because uh, as well as being a good personal challenge it would give me good content uh, for the YouTube channel that I have as well. And I have to say, hat and shake of all, I, I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> I did a two-year course in about five and a half, six months because it was kind of uh, condensed into that. I mm. did it as a mature student. So there was about seven or eight of us. 
the rest of the people in the class were around my age or younger than me. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I was the only one in the class who was doing it because I was interested in and in love with the language. Uh, the other mm -hmm. seven, all females, by the way, they were doing it because you have to have a certain score in higher level Irish to become a primary level teacher, like for uh, small children. OK, so yeah. that's why that's why they were there. And I was there mm -hmm. for my channel and just for myself. But I really. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the challenge. I enjoyed the learning. My own standard improved as well as it went on. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it was great. Yeah, it was great. I, I, don't, I don't I never mentioned it on the on my YouTube channel yet. I was saving it for saving it for you. Oh, the, okay. score, <laughs> the score I got anyway, after after six months of study and work and yeah. preparation, um, and it was oral and it was written and I can go through all that in a minute. But basically I got a H2. So the okay. highest the highest score you can get is a H1. A H1 is somewhere between 90 and 100 percent, whereas a H2 mm -hmm. is somewhere between 80 and 90 percent. They don't actually okay. give you the exact score. So although I was aiming for a H1, I was still reasonably happy that I got the I got the H2. And uh mm -hmm. it it was great getting the results on that day. It was um the teachers were were delighted. They didn't think any of the mature students would would get that score. Oh um, wow! Okay. But yeah, I, I was I was delighted. Very happy with it. Yeah, very happy it, with the whole experience. Yeah, it, it's funny because um, I've seen this with a lot of students um, too. Whereas you know, students that are I I'm a college professor as well um, as a lot of other things, <laughs> um, but. A lot of my students, uh, there's a huge difference in ages. So some of them are straight out of high school and some of them, uh, which they're straight out of high school, they're kind of continuing that public education. They're continuing to do it because they feel like they have to for something, for either a career goal or something. Um, but then I have a lot of older students, some of them older than me, um, that come in and are studying for a certain certificate or a certain career. And the way they approach it is very different. So it's very interesting to me how when you mature as a person, if you go back to education, to a, a class or a education system, your perspective on it changes somewhat. There's an old saying, uh, you've probably heard of it, um, youth is wasted on the young. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I look back now and, and I think back when I was, say, 15, 16, 17, and you have your whole life laid out, you're, you're in education for eight hours a day, five days a week. Mm. You've all these opportunities, access to teachers, um, libraries, you name it. And I suppose you can't put an old head um, on young shoulders. But mm. I think it's a good point you make. When, when mature students go back, they one, they have more confidence, I think. And two, yeah. they have more ability to perhaps uh, be appreciative for the opportunities that they that they have. Yeah. Yeah, they, they see the value in it a bit more. Yeah. Um, I think, and it's funny because, like like you say, they're in school, young people are in school for eight hours a day, um, just as we used to be. And, you know, you don't, because I think because you're surrounded by it so often, so much, yeah. you kind of just take it for granted and it just becomes a day-to-day -day drudgery. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's only when you look back um, with the benefit of time, you, you can see the how you probably should have appreciated it more or maybe taken more advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's interesting. And that's great that they offer the leaving cert. Like you could go back and take it again for, yeah. for people well, who are older or people who want I was to. lucky as well because I, I did it in a, in a community school, Gory community college, um, but they don't necessarily do it every year. It depends on um, the, on the demand um, because okay. it's kind of specialized and it can be hard to find Irish teachers as well um because mm. irish teachers are kind of in the high demand because there's not exactly a whole lot of them graduating from the college system if that's a simplistic way of putting it but yeah. i was just fortunate that i was able to do it for the 2018 2019 um calendar year yeah and it's it's mm. it's it's great to have that yeah but i i could if i could possibly go back to a previous question um cheryl sure. um do you remember you i think you asked me about my the background with Guelga. yeah i think my background as well, which I forgot to mention, and I've never said this to anybody else. I've never said it on the channel or on my on the other things. But 
there was a couple of things that happened since say 2013 2014 that kind of lit the fire it's kind mm-hmm. of similar probably to why irish americans have that kind of connection to ireland um mm. they might not know it's there but something might prompt them you know to, yeah. to, to get that so basically what happened to me is i'm just going to refer to my notes because i want to make sure i have the right uh, the right timeline here but i in 2009 I was going out with a, with a girl. She wasn't from Ireland originally. She was from Latvia. And mm. uh, it was only a short relationship. It broke up soon enough. But I, al- I always remember we were talking about one time about her child, which she had from a previous relationship, that she, it was he was, go- he was going to be going to school soon. And she was wanting to uh, sign some form or write some letter that the child wouldn't have to study Irish. Uh, oh, that, okay. you know, it's, that's illegal. You can't do that anyway, unless uh, some create, unless, unless the exemption. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless there's some learning difficulty that's been approved mm. by a psychologist or something like that. And I was yeah. just trying to explain to her how learning languages, all languages are beneficial, useful, because mm-hmm. I did German and Irish in school. Mm-hmm. And I, after that conversation, I was just surprised at myself at how angry I got when she was saying mm. that, um, the child should be excluded from Irish, even though he's in Ireland getting a free education from mm-hmm. the Irish government as such, you know. So that was one in 2009, 2010, say. Mm-hmm. And then I had a similar conversation with my sister then around 2013, um, who mm-hmm. I got on with really well, by the way. She's like, she's my best friend. Like, But this particular conversation, she was kind of pondering how useful Irish was. And uh, yeah. um, th- this kind of thing usually happens in probably over every kitchen table in Ireland and beyond Mm -hmm. and again I was just surprised at how kind of uh how much I resented what she was saying because I was just angry that she couldn't see the benefit of Irish Uh, how how it's a window to our past how at one time Irish was the language of commerce Mm -hmm. of um all kinds of business of government of of lovemaking of raising children it was everywhere on, on until it was you know until it had its difficulties basically yeah. uh, so that was i always remember those two conversations and then okay. moving on to politics then in 2014 mm. um you, you might be i'm sure you're aware that there's there's northern ireland and then the republic of ireland and yeah. while the language is, were, is well preserved and and, the, and the, go, the government in the south and the republic always do their best to promote mm-hmm. Irish on science and all that kind of stuff. It's a different story in the North because yeah. you have descendants of the Ulster Protestant people who have lived here since the 1600s when the when Britain was colonizing Ireland and basically thrown the natives off their land and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. anyway, there was a, there's a couple of politicians in, in the North of Ireland, one called Gregory Campbell and another mm-hmm. called Jim Allister. So okay. if you or any of your viewers were to type in you onto YouTube, Gregory Campbell, curry my yogurt. I don't know if that rings a bell with you, or maybe you haven't seen that. I, I don't think I've seen that one, uh, mm-hmm. but I think I actually think someone mentioned that on another podcast I was listening to. Yeah, yeah. And basically, what happened in in the Northern Parliament, which is a, a regional assembly, um, mm-hmm. Gregory Campbell was waiting to speak, and what is commonly said in the Southern Parliament and in the Northern Parliament is which means thank you chairperson or chairman so mm. gregory campbell was hearing this from other members in the northern assembly and he thought he'd try and make a joke about it by saying uh, curry my yogurt count coca-cola and <laughs> okay. it's, it's not even funny like but it was no. just his way of trying to demean and mm. trying to marginalize the language as if it hasn't been true enough already and then on the same day, it might have been the same day, it might have been the same day, maybe the same week, he audibly yawned, like yawned very, very loudly when the chairperson, or sorry, another speaker was was just uh, conduct, conducting a speech in Irish. He, mm. was, he just went like, like petulant, uh, vindictive, you know, and it's just, in, in yeah. some ways it was it was just symptomatic of the struggles that Irish has had over the years. And sometimes what I do, and I've never said this to anyone, but sometimes what I do is if I'm struggling for motivation to mm-hmm. make another video, because I, I, I sometimes I, I, I have a, a relentless schedule where I try my best to upload twice a week at specific times. And sometimes yeah, I do you upload a lot. <laughs> I try anyway. <laughs> um, 
So if I'm struggling that week or if I'm thinking of maybe easing off for a while, I'll often just go onto the onto YouTube, type in mm -hmm. Gregory Campbell Irish language or Jim Allister Irish language. And mm -hmm. that kind of gives me the motivation to, you know, do three videos that week instead of two. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's like you, you kind of get a motivation to be like, uh, no, I'm going to prove these people wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You exactly. know, I'm I'm gonna and I'm gonna show them that it has value. Yeah, absolutely. And following on from that, I remember in the 2017. I'm just checking my notes here to make sure I'm right. This is very. I I, I thought this was hilarious at the time, and I still do. But in the 27 <laughs> Northern election to to the Northern Parliament, um, mm -hmm. the leader of the Northern Ireland Democratic Unionist Party, Arlene Foster who in fairness is, is is not the worst she's probably a bit more mm. moderate than the likes of gregory campbell I, i'll have to give her credit like to so, a certain extent but she was playing to her base and she was basically mm -hmm. saying that if we bring in an irish language act for the north of ireland for the six counties that are still under british rule yeah her 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 way of phrasing that was if you feed the crocodile they'll come back for more mm. so she was comparing the Irish language and half of half of the population of her community to a crocodile, but then to a threat, what, basically. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Even though it's the native language of this land, yeah. even though the county she comes from has a rich Irish name, Fermanagh, you know, like a man mm. of it translates to man of Manach. It kind of goes back to okay. the spiritual, um, like you know, like like Fionn McCool, or like that that kind of era. Even though she comes from a, a county with such a magical irish name she was still comparing the irish language the language that was here long before the ulster protestant invaders came in and colonized yeah. this land she was comparing that to a threat but then what happened was when jerry adams who was the leader of Sinn fein uh, at the time he was the leader i think um when he heard what she said he, he made a comment oh okay see you later alligator <laughs> that's funny i thought it was without, without I, i'm not going to say i'm not trying to get into politics too much or say preference but i just thought whatever yeah. your thoughts on jerry adams some people love him some people hate him mm. I, I mean you have to hand him that was just a, a wonderful comeback yeah he point, had he had the opening and he took it <laughs> yeah absolutely so i have to just charge my computer here now to make yeah. sure i don't lose it oh no problem um oh yeah yeah um, and that's one of the things i've never well it's hard for people here to understand how um, another language could be seen as threatening. And that's very much a, I wanna say it's probably the child of propaganda, you know, from a very early time, um, you know, because a language is inherently not good, bad, anything like that. It's, yeah. it's literally just part of a heritage and a culture so, and a way of seeing the world uh yes. for a, gr a group of people so like that's for it great, to be that's seen a great way of describing it yeah and yeah over 90 percent of the place names in the north all of ireland but in northern ireland actually originate mm. in the irish language like for example yeah. derry for example derry is like oak it's like oak leaf that's why it's known as oh the oak yeah leaf yeah things like that you know it's 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 part and parcel of of who we are north south east and west and it's mm -hmm. a terrible shame that certain members of political allegiances parties up north don't see that mm -hmm. because me yeah. i'm just back from a i'm just back from a trip to belfast and i was very interested in going to and exploring um the history of orange museum the, the history of the orange order in ireland now unfortunately okay. the museum was, this museum was closed but so i didn't get mm. to see it but i still would have been very interested in it i'd be very interested in learning and finding out about ulster scots which is a dialect of yeah. old english very yeah. interesting i'm not i'm not threatened by that i don't see it as a threat i see it as a part yeah. of our shared heritage mm -hmm. yeah and and that's the thing is like trying to separate the politics and and things like that from just parts of people's culture that they don't want to lose that they want to stay connected to um i guess the closest thing here in america is that there are groups of people who feel threatened by any language being used or offered that isn't english um but it, it's so it's such a ridiculous concept because english is so prevalent there's really no threat to it 
There, exactly. There's no threat. Exactly. Yeah. So there's yeah. no reason not to say, you know, hey, this language can be used here or could be offered here. There's no way it's going to usurp English. Yeah. Some kind of insecurity. I, 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 guy. Mm. I, I try and get inside their minds. I, I guess that they're insecure. They're worried because Northern Protestants, the Northern Unionists, probably know that the the rest of the United Kingdom, they, they don't really care about them. They see that with the whole Brexit thing. So, mm, yeah, I think it's there is an insecurity there, and it's 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 shown in many ways. By if you go to a a loyalist part of Belfast. So a part that's mm -hmm. pro-British and wants to, wants the union with Britain to remain, you will find yeah. like English flags, Union Jacks, Scottish flags, like almost everywhere. But then, if you take a few a few minutes drive, like I did with a taxi driver, to mm -hmm. the nationalist part of Belfast, like which is more pro-Irish and wants Ireland to be re reunited, you'll mm -hmm. have to look very hard to find a tricolor. You wouldn't you wouldn't really find mm -hmm. one. It shows the confidence, I suppose, that one side has, and maybe the insecurity the other side has but having yeah. said that i think i still would would like to engage with the other side and to talk to them and show them that yeah. the irish language is not a threat it's part of our no. shared, shared heritage yeah and and honestly i mean one of the best examples that probably could be shown to them is the way welsh is right yeah. now the fact that welsh was you know is still very prevalent in its area um, yeah. it might not be world renowned, uh, yeah. uh, but, uh, except for people who study like British lit, like I did in college, uh, there's quite a bit of, uh, yeah. that, uh, especially with old tales and things like that. But yeah, that's a great example um, yeah. because that's a really, really good example actually. And I, I hadn't thought of it, but the, the we, we, Wales is part of the United Kingdom. So you have Wales, England, Scotland, mm -hmm. and Northern Ireland, and there's a Welsh language act. There's some mm -hmm. Welsh road signs all over Wales, especially in, in the west of Wales, where the language is stronger. So road yeah. signs are bilingual. Um, and, you know, nobody there is, no English speaker there is feeling under threat. Instead, yeah. what's happening is the Welsh, because they're getting support from the British government, maybe in a strange way, they actually feel more part of the British family because they see the British yeah. government supporting them. Un yeah. Unlike what's happening up in the north, where northern nationalists feel that the british government is not supporting their rights language mm. rights so they're looking to the south maybe uh, to see if they can have their rights respected that way but the wales yeah. the welsh ones is, is, is a great example yeah and of course wales yeah. is all part of the, the celtic family of languages yeah along with yeah Brett, definitely Brett, yeah. there a lot of people get more intimidated by um by welsh spelling though <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's a Definitely. different world some it people is. ask ask me do i would i understand i i wouldn't have a clue mm. i would be very comfortable with scottish gaelic because irish and scottish gaelic is pretty much the same language it's just evolved differently over the years but mm. welsh is just <laughs> you know. it's another it's another thing altogether <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah um, well, um, let's go into, um, I just don't want to go too long, but yep. uh, that's some really good good topics there, um, especially with that, because a lot of people here don't know the background of some of the uh, political, cultural tensions that sometimes happen, especially surrounding the language, um, and some of the ways that it kind of shouldn't be that way and, and why, so that's really good. Yeah. Um, but uh, how and why did you start your YouTube channel? You said that was interesting. Yeah. Well, it's probably related to a lot of the things I've already said, like about how I, Irish was always there. It was deep inside me, and it, it a couple of times over the years, it was it was um, kind of lit or relit, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's it's probably a lot to do with that. But I was. You see, I had a, I have another YouTube channel, and it's just under my name, Dane Tai, so D A N E T Y G H E, mm -hmm. and it's a video. It, it on that channel, it's driving lesson videos because I'm ac I've actually been a driving instructor for the last twelve years since two thousand and eight, oh. and I started that YouTube channel way back in twenty eleven, before like well before YouTube was fashionable, and it gradually grew and grew after you know. I'd, I'd upload and then it'd be long periods when I wouldn't upload but I started taking it more seriously from 2014 onwards and I could see the benefit of having a YouTube channel 
not just in terms of sharing information, for example, for learner drivers and people preparing for their test and American tourists as well, which is another section of people that would watch it. Um, so not just for sharing information, but for just keeping yourself motivated and keeping yourself mm -hmm. to a schedule. And as well as all the other things, like from the, the, the great teachers I had in school to the people who were sort of dissing the language over the years um, to how I could see the success of the driving channel, which is it's bigger than my Irish one, even though I put more time and effort into the Irish one. Mm -hmm. And I could see that uh, I like the way YouTube is. I, I like the way you can express yourself on YouTube and you can make a few uh, you can make a few bob on it as well. Uh, uh, money, I mean, now you wouldn't oh, yeah. be. You wouldn't be, uh, you know, you wouldn't be uh, writing checks like Bill Gates, but oh, you can no. <laughs> have a, an income that can support your main income. And mm. it's like anything, the more time you put into it, the better. But there was yeah. one other YouTube video, not necessarily channel, YouTube video that I saw. Uh, I think it was around the time I started my channel or maybe just before. And it may have been the biggest impact at all, uh, of all of the things I've said to you, bigger than even the arguments I had with my sister and all that mm. kind of stuff. It's from TEDx Talks. I don't know if you've heard of that channel. TEDx oh, Talks. I love TED. Yeah. yeah, I actually recommend TED and TEDx to uh -huh. my students. Uh, right. The fact that I found those channels was actually really influential for me in a yeah. lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I'd say a lot of people would have would agree with you, but there is a video on that from uh, Donald O'Hady, and he's okay. talking about the Irish language and beauty. So if you just type in uh, that, both I words, the Irish language, and beauty, yeah. And that was like yeah. almost a light bulb moment. Here he is, mm. this wonderfully articulate man who's telling a story about how he was once ashamed of the language as a young boy and how he mm -hmm. matured and grew up. And he told a great story about the old man who's finding himself and who, who was lost and all that kind of stuff. And I think I watched that video so many times and I think that story just encapsulates my journey in many ways. Mm -hmm. It gives two examples, for example, the Irish for um, a ladybird is Boeing Day. And that mm -hmm. tra literally translates into God's little calf. And mm -hmm. Mach Tira, he says as well, a wolf, mm -hmm. like the son of the land, because wolves were native to Ireland for many years until, the 18, until they were wiped out in the 1800s. Yeah. So that's... That channel was 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 a big influence on me. That that video, sorry, was a big big influence on me to me. Yeah, in terms of building the channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's so many words, and and a lot of people always point to like smuggle or own, which uh, yeah. <laughs> is a funny one. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was seal seal snot for yeah. a jellyfish, uh, yeah. and um, there's some other ones too, and. Um, even though some of them are funny, like like you say, Maktira, um, mm -hmm. the words, like when learners learn those words, they don't really break them down. Um, they'll yeah. learn them as a whole, just as Maktira equals wolf, wolf, yeah. Maktira. Uh, but, they, but eventually, as you grow as a learner in language, you go back and look at those and say, wait, Mak means sun, Tira mm -hmm. means land or country. And so it's, you know, son of the land. And, you know, for that, that tells you something about the people who named these animals yeah. and what they thought of Absolutely. them. That's so, like, yeah. again, it goes back to the lang Irish and uh, probably other, lang other languages, I'm sure, too, being a mm. window on the past. Like if mm. you think of the name McLaughlin, like so Mach means son. Or even mm -hmm. O'Loughlin, like like uh, O being from, like like my mm -hmm. my surname in Irish is O'Taig, so from Timothy. Mm -hmm. So okay. McLaughlin, for example, is the son of the Lachlan League. So the Lachlan League would be the mm -hmm. the Vikings or the Scandinavians. So oh, okay. a, once you unwrap the the language, like Mactira, Bowen Day, uh, Jora, Jora Day as well, like uh, Tears from Heaven. That's like the mm -hmm. the flowers that that have the thing that hang down like that. Like I, I, actually, you're you're a good gardener, aren't you? So I, maybe oh, yeah. you can maybe you can. What are the, what are they called again? Wisteria um, or no? Possibly no. I, I'm I know I'm putting you on the spot, but they're they're basically flowers, and mm -hmm. they have other flowers that kind of hang down like that. And mm -hmm. the oh, Irish name. Uh, for them. If you say it, I'll probably remember, but I, I'm just stuck for the actual name of it now. Is it the Bleeding Heart? 
Yeah, it could be. It could be that. Uh, Bleeding Heart. I think that's one of possibly. the names of it. It yeah, has it the be. little flowers that hang down, and they're a little bit like a yeah. like a heart on each one. Yeah, it, it could be. So yeah. if it's not those, it's, it's definitely something similar. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Irish, they're called Dior Day, so tears from heaven, or, or God's tears, ah, basically. Ah, okay. So it just goes yeah. back to what you were saying. It, like, almost every word in Irish is like a gift, like a present, mm -hmm. like a bruntness, a present. And all you have to do is unwrap it, and you have another window a small window or a large window into the past and how our ancestors saw the world and how yeah. our ancestors taught in their own heads. Yeah. And I've learned that with colors too. Like you learn the basic colors with Irish, but then you start digging in the dictionary and suddenly there's like five or so colors, probably more for just yeah. the color of the ocean, depending on yeah. how, yeah. you know, how the weather is. And, um, Definitely. A good yeah, example so. is is the Irish. There's two colors that I know of anyway for red in Irish. Do you do? Can you tell me what they are? Two colors uh, for red. Jarig and Rua. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's great. So you you know one is for like um, art, let's say artistic colors, and the other then would yeah. be for like wildlife, like like Fia Rua, like red deer or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So one is like for fur and hair being red. Yeah. Exactly. Hair, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's really interesting because it technically it is a very different thing. So like a red that you paint on a canvas is very different from the red of a, a fox. Absolutely, yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah. Completely. Like one might be like this bright, um, striking red, whereas mm -hmm. the fox might have a slightly lighter red or even yeah, orange. We would call say. that orange, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, English yeah. would probably call that orange. But yeah. we don't call them orange foxes. We call them red foxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um oh so um so you got your YouTube channel started. Um and yeah, basically uh, I, I was I was kind of looking for a yeah. I was just looking for another I, I suppose if I'm being brutally honest with you, I was getting mm -hmm. fed up with the driving lessons, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. <laughs> I was looking for another route and another, uh, let's say, another job, let's say. And I was I was just looking at how my driving channel was becoming very successful and I was making reasonably good money. Like not not a lot. I could make maybe four or five hundred dollars on the on the ads like and I might make more on uh, yeah. like like people might give you a few euros for 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 your troubles, basically, you know, like they might donate yeah. basically. So I could see that that was a good a good earner and i was thinking like mm -hmm. what could i do that that i'm something that i'm passionate about something that i'm really really interested in and I, i'm still yeah. interested in the driving of course i, I would i'm still i'm going i'm hopefully going to go back to that but it was the irish language then that i thought of and i went online and i searched to see what other channels there were on teaching irish or speaking irish or learning irish and i found practically nothing like i mean there were yeah. a few good ones there a few interesting ones like that taught you the basics like you know uh yeah. like bite, bite size irish for example um, yeah, they're good. and a few others mm -hmm. yep yeah very good and the, the, the very good blog actually as well mm -hmm. um but apart from that i found very little and uh, so I, I couldn't find much so i just i said okay i'll start my own one I, i'm reasonably familiar with youtube I, and i just i just did it yeah yeah and yeah and um, i know <laughs> yeah, I'm also I'm also an author. So like in the in the author realm, they say that if you can't find the book, the type of book you want to read, write yeah. it. Exactly. So very, very much the same thing. If you can't find the videos you want to watch, make them. Good, so, good, yeah. good advice. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's great. Um, and it's been very successful. You have a lot of videos up right now. Uh, again, like you said, you're trying to post like twice a week sometimes. Yeah, if possible, um, yeah. So, so that's really good. And con and consistent uploading is one of the things that's really good for any channel. It is. Um, it, it really is. And, I, and yeah. I've had a – I've I, there's there's other channels that I, I would watch regularly because they give great advice and great tips on how to grow a channel and how to mm. keep, keep it growing, like uh, Nick Nimmin and Brian G. Johnson. They're two – separate youtubers they do work together a little bit but they're separate youtubers and they have great great videos on how to keep the channel going and i suppose I, it, it's from them as well and the likes of video creators and a guy called tim schmoyer and, and, and people like that who have just give great information on on how to be the best that you can be on youtube and 
that's kind of helped me along has helped guided me along as well with the with the channel but the main, the main reason yeah. i started was just basically out of love for the language mm -hmm. wanting a separate income stream and knowing that i wouldn't i wouldn't find it too hard to motivate myself for this yeah and it definitely filled in the gap for a lot of learners that were doing some searching on youtube because it's it's much easier to tune into a video um, that Definitely. you can either watch or listen to or both um, than to try to find blog posts and old forum posts and things like that, that may be too, I guess, reading heavy sometimes for yeah. the comprehension to, to get something out of it. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's been really good. Um, so what's your personal approach? And you show this through a lot of your videos too, but what's your personal approach to learning Guelga effectively? Start simple and build your way up. I often say to people like, don't worry about complicated grammar rules or like, is this masculine? Is this feminine? All this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm not a grammar expert in Irish and I'll never ever claim to be. I would always say to people, start with the, with the basics, like, like look around your room, for example, like mm -hmm. behind me, there's, there's a, a Doris, for example, and, mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe even put labels on it. Uh, so yeah. Doris, uh, the wall is Bala. Um, uh, there could be a doll, Babog. There could be a, a book, Lauer, um, a pen, uh, Pion or Pion Louis. So that I would say things like that. I would also give people what I think is, is a very important bit of advice. And that is, try and unwrap the presence that Irish place names give you. Look, I mentioned about Derry, for example, but where I'm from, Wexford, the Irish name is Loch Gorman. So that translates mm -hmm. into the Lake of Corman, uh, okay. Cor Corman's Lake. And it's named after uh, a man who was caught stealing food many oh. moons ago, I'm not sure when, mm -hmm. and he was drowned as he was trying to escape or possibly by the authorities. Some of the stories is a bit, a bit shady. Mm -hmm. um, he was basically drowned in the river um, oh, man. beside us, you know. So if you go through all the place names in Ireland, you'll, you'll find, like our neighbour, Kilkenny, for example, Kilkenny. So kill, any, anything with kill in Irish, like C-I-L-L. -L, do, you know, do you know what that means? Uh, I think it's uh, either, if I'm remembering correctly, it's either a forest or a churchyard, isn't it? Yes, actually, it could be either, actually, yes, very good. Oh, so okay. like, quill, quill could be like C O I L L would, would be like a, like a woods and then C I L L okay. would be a church. So like, okay. for example, I used to live in a place in Wexford called Killeen's K I L L E E N S. And it wasn't until I started studying the signs around my area that I could see the Irish language translation C O I L L quill, as you, as you just said, and mm. I thought an N at the end. So it's basically mm. telling anybody who wants to look, it, that Killeen's is a, a baby forest or a, a tiny forest. Little forest, yeah, yeah. little forest, yeah, exactly. That's so my my approach, that's my approach. I was as I was driving up to Belfast at the weekend. You have all the because I wouldn't be drive like I, I I would drive around regularly, but I wouldn't usually go much further north of Dublin. So when I was going north of Dublin, you can you're into County Mead and County Loud, and you can see all these place names that you don't see every day. And because we have bilingual signs in in Ireland, you, you can. You know, every place name is a little a little present that you can open up and get a window into the past. Unfortunately, when you head into County Down and County Antrim, two mm -hmm. of the most distinctly Irish names you'll ever find anywhere, there is no bilingual signs because the oh, Irish language yeah. doesn't have the same rights up in the north. Um, so that goes back to the battle that we're facing to have mutual respect for our language. But Down, yeah. anyway, is just Undoon, which is basically the fort or the the protective ah. hideaway and then antrim a okay. and trim so a like as in single or lonely and trim is like a ridge or a oh, okay a yeah. ridge so the lonely ridge basically you know mm. so that would be my approach start basic words basic phrases like you had a great one there at the start but you were talking about phrases like kataharla and konasatatu that those type of short yeah. phrases and then like like build on that like Maybe, maybe, maybe stick labels in the room and what, what's a board, what's a bala, a laba, this and a solace for light, laba is bed, but yeah. Anyway. And I think that that can work. And then the, the complicated grammar and all those stuff that people freak out about, that can all come later on, you know. But if you get the basics right first, that's the, yeah. that's the important thing. 
Yeah, and I know I'm a little bit backwards of that, that I like to know the why things are phrased that way. Yeah. And oftentimes yeah. I'll go look it up myself later, but it's not necessary. Yeah. It's not yeah. necessary at all. And in fact, when people are learning English, when kids are learning English, like um, my son, he's he's three right now. So um, a lot of times I'll say, um, uh, uh, does uh, does the dog need water or something, something like that? And he'll go, she does. <laughs> and, and I'm like, you mean does? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it does. And um, and so like just the fact that and that being in a regular verb, English has a lot of them. So he's conjugating it based on what he knows the word do. So he says do's instead of does. Yeah. And you have to be willing to make those mistakes to learn. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. it's just going to happen and you have to be OK with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, taking, um, so yeah, you're basically wanting people to look at um, the cool little details in the language um, that we've gotten yeah. and to kind of not stress too much over the grammar, just try to learn exactly. the words yeah. and then eventually work them into phrases. And yes. the more you use them, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. And then verbs, of course, are important. Like the verb mm. be, to be, the verb dain, mm. to do or make, and of course the verb ka, which can be a whole a whole list a of things. Of things. Like, uh, <laughs> God, you know, it's the best verb out. I made a video on that a few weeks ago. So if, if you pick and maybe start with those verbs and then mm -hmm. some words and then some short phrases and then just, just build it up slowly but surely, and you'll get mm -hmm. there then, the rare kale, as we say, the rare kale gradually. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, so what doors, um, obviously we've talked about a few, uh, but what doors has Guelga opened up for you? Um, not that many, to be honest with you, because I haven't, I don't see it as, um, a way to open many doors, but I should probably, okay. maybe I'm, I'm slightly contradicting myself. The biggest mm -hmm. door it's opened up to me there is it's, it's allowed me to be more like who I really am. Like I, di I never realized mm -hmm. I was so proud to have this precious language and to me that's the most important door it's opened up uh youtube yeah. has allowed me to and and the facebook page i have it has allowed me to showcase for myself and for others that are, that want to look or want to listen uh how beautiful how important this language is so that's the main door it's opened up another door as mm -hmm. well it's it's allowed me to have another income um in addition to my other jobs as a driving mm -hmm. instructor and a, i do a bit of wedding videography as well so it's it's allowed me to have a, a creative side, I suppose you could say, and it's allowed me to promote the language as best I can. And as I'm promoting, I'm learning and relearning as well, you know, because as I said, I'm not fluent and I'll never, I'll never ever claim to be. So yeah. it's allowed me to keep things fresh, you know, in my own head for my own speech. And it's allowed me to be more confident as well if I do come across an Irish speaker you're probably more likely to come across an Irish speaker in Belfast now or Donegal or Galway or Kerry wow. than you are in Wexford. But if I do meet an old teacher or if I do meet a Gwilgor here in Wexford, um, I'm able to converse with them um, in a confident way without any without any worries, you know? Yeah. And, and I tell a lot of people this too, that the whole concept of being fluent or being LIFA is, is not, it's not really true. Um, because yeah. if you think about it, even, even though I'm considered fluent in English, yeah. uh, and you're considered fluent in English, if, if someone were to ask you like legal terminology yes, or if someone were to ask me, I might not know any of those words or yeah. what they mean in that context. And so yeah. someone would say, oh, well, since you don't know all the words that English has to give in every context, you can't be fluent, but that's yeah. not true. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. what, like what exactly is fluent like who is it arbitrary like, yeah. like who decides that all, all you can do is is i i don't see yeah. being fluent as this magical place i get to because i i could i could consider myself fluent and i suddenly might forget mm -hmm. all the other things that i forgot maybe or all the other things i learned two years ago yes yeah. i think you just have to i think you just have to be happy in yourself and just do your best uh, mm -hmm. learn new words learn new phrases and i would always say to, to learners as well if they're asking just just be realistic with your expectations 
like mm-hmm. to go from zero to fluent is, is a massive step for anybody in any language so yeah if you just kind of maybe maybe think of it in smaller steps smaller smaller regular steps is probably uh, a yeah. wiser course of action working it into your daily routine or yeah. um maybe picking up a book to read um and reading might be really slow and challenging at first uh and it, yeah. it has been for me sometimes but i like finding the phrases and words that i don't know uh and then adding those to ones that i do know so that's been really helpful too yeah it's a good idea yeah yeah so uh so what would you hope to see in the future for uh Guelga language learning and content that's out there one of the first things i would love to see would be for uh, somebody to to start a campaign in ireland to rename as many place names as possible and to put them back to their original irish names i think mm. if we did that it would be a massive step for promoting uh, the language for the future of Gwilga, uh, and for, for for learning and for culture and content as well. I'll give you an example, Charlotte. There's a place in Limerick. Uh, now I've never been. I've never been to this particular. I've been to Limerick, but I've never been to this particular place. Its English name is called um, Lemon Fields. Okay, it's it's like a it's like a it's a village or it's a it's a part of Limerick. It may be an urban part or a, a village of some sort, but its original Irish name is Lame on Ia. Do you know what that means? Lame on Ia. Uh, it's like jump. Yeah. Uh, jump the something. Jump the yeah. So the the deer. So Fia is is deer oh, and okay. on Ia yeah. it's Shebu. So yeah. somehow this wonderfully beautiful and poetic name of a place has been anglicized into lemon fields now i can assure you i've lived here all my life we we grow great strawberries great potatoes but mm-hmm. lemons no maybe in spain no. and portugal but not not here no that's yeah. just one example like of how lame on ia the jumping of the deer like one of the most beautiful wildland native the, of course the red deer is native to ireland like it is to most of europe anyway uh, the mm-hmm. jumping of the deer turns into the lemon fields now that example alone will just show you how how ridiculous the anglicization yeah. has gone so i would love to see the government whatever political party comes in in the future to try and start some kind of a process that we rename all our place names to their back to their native irish names and and use that in more conversation and maybe develop that more i think that would be a great um, yeah. first step and even making and from what you say from that example even making the english version of the place name resemble more of what it actually meant yep that could so be a step as like well. uh, like deer meadows would sound better oh than yeah yeah field, yeah so, something yeah. along those lines would be yeah. definitely it could be like a stepping stone to full mm. uh completion maybe in in, in years yeah. to come but yeah that would be certainly be a be a, a better way of going about it yeah yeah, the other so thing I'd like to see, yeah. sorry, the other thing I'd like, I'd like, I'd oh. love to see as well is, is, is more Gwail Skull, because mm. there are uh, schools that uh, educate children only through the Irish language, with, with mm-hmm. the exception of English. Subject of English is taught through English, but mm-hmm. if we had more of them, and I know, and I know they are opening up all the time, mm-hmm. and it is hard to find uh, suitably qualified Irish teachers, and, and I can certainly understand the, the difficulties that. The, said any government whether this government the previous governments would have but that yeah. would certainly be a big step because if i'm if i'm ever given say driving lessons to some i meet a lot of young people like and if i if i start talking to them in irish and they're just going to a regular school like i went to you mm-hmm. can see they'll they'll try their best to converse but they wouldn't have the same confidence with you but if i yeah. if i do that with someone who went to a Gwail school primary or, or a man school secondary so man is middle school they will just talk to you just as if you're as if you're talking as if i'm like i'm talking to you now but that takes yeah. time and it takes a yeah. bit of a bit of that as well and it, and it does. patience yeah 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 that would be great um i've actually heard or i've seen on videos podcasts and other things like that people who have gotten the chance to go to Gwail schools and that there is some uh some like i guess um superiority type or elitist type thing 
a, a view yeah, with I, them, I, but there really doesn't yeah. need to be. No, um, no, it doesn't need to be. Yeah. I've heard of that, all right. Yeah, um, but but not really. Yeah, it's, it, it depends it's, on your on on the perception. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's. Well, and I'd say, uh, by the, I'd probably say the same. Maybe not with as much passion, but if 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 it was a German school or a French school, I think if you if you educate kids bilingually in whatever language, it's bound to be good for the children for their thought process and that kind of stuff. Because oh, I know yeah. from my experience with Irish there last year in the Leaving Cert, I I found out new ways that I'd forgotten or new ways that are just new and fresh to learn to study. I, I discovered I could use acronyms more. So if I went back to German now, so I used to enjoy German in school, but I've, I've probably forgotten most of it now. So if I did go back and, and learn German, for example, I know myself that having done Irish, I'd actually be in a better position to learn German now because I've able to, I've trained my brain in acronyms, in study techniques, study skills, and I could do a better job at German now having had the background of Irish. Yeah, that, that's one of the misconceptions that people have with language learning is they think your brain can only hold so much language, yeah. but really and truly it's it's only compounded because if you have one language, it can be hard to learn that second one. Um, yeah. But it, once you have two, yes. it's much easier to learn the third. And if you have three, it's much easier to learn the fourth. They compound on each other. Um, yeah. And because you're able to, your brain's able to make those connections quicker and easier yeah. the more language you have. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we've already um I had one other question for you, which was like, uh, what would you recommend to learners who are just getting started? But we kind of touched on that. Um yeah. so I wanted to take a look at the next one. Um, so like what other content producers are out there that you would recommend? You mentioned a couple of videos here and there, but yeah. Yeah. There's. I, I mentioned a few that that really got me started. Um, like Donald Donald O'Hady there on on beauty and the Irish language. Mm. But where can I start? On the Molly McHale and Gwilga <laughs> McCree. Yeah. She, I think she's amazing. Her confidence is just in front of the camera is awesome. You 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 know she has a future on stage ahead of her anyway. She but when I saw her channel and even the name of the channel itself, it kind of reminded me of my story like because um mm -hmm. like irish gwelga mccree irish in my heart it's kind of like it was in my heart as well but i probably mm -hmm. didn't know it for so many years i think she's brilliant the way she uh talks about the language her mm -hmm. her techniques she's really good on instagram as well she's she's got a big following there and her energy and her optimism are are just just a credit to her you know so i would definitely recommend her um as a potential learning outlet for any learners out there yeah. But also um, another person on YouTube called uh, Kira Nie. I don't know if you've heard of her. Ah, uh, yep, yep. Brilliant. I've, I, I've been in touch with her the odd time, um, just wishing her well because she she made a, a, a program on TV there about uh, Sail Tree Guelga about her life living mm -hmm. life through Irish. She she could come out with anything. She could have a video on a poem about her Doc Martens on one time, and then she could have a next video about changing her name. Uh, by D Paul, such a, a big variety of of videos there, and she has some great content as well for learners. Um, yeah. Also, I'll just check my notes here to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, Twitter, the Irish Far on Twitter. I, I know you're familiar with mm -hmm. with that channel or that that Twitter handle, aren't you? Yeah, the Irish really Far is uh, Derek. Yeah, Derek, uh, Derek O'Shea, O'Shea, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's brilliant, and he has a podcast as well. Um, mm -hmm. just, uh, Mother Folklore? Anyone is interested, just, sorry? Uh, is it the Mother Folklore podcast? Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. yeah, sorry, I, I just momentarily forgot there. Yeah, exactly, that's it. That's, that's, I've listened to a few of those, uh, really, really good, and really an interesting and informative stuff on his Twitter handle and on his, uh, mm -hmm. on his podcast. Also, um, TG Lurgan, have you heard of them? Yeah, yeah. Who yep. hasn't? I was uh, mm -hmm. like, when I saw there, that that was kind of start, another thing that probably started to light my fire as well. But when I saw some of their videos, yeah, brilliant music videos, uh, where they just for anybody that doesn't know, where they they recreate famous songs in Irish, mm -hmm. and it's just just brilliant. TG Lurgan on on YouTube, um, a yeah. few more. Um, another one of my favorites on Instagram as well as Molly would be um, Moon Tour Meg. Have you heard of Moon Tour Meg? Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. You're you're well up on, on the, 
I've been I've been searching for things uh, ravenously because just um, the lack of like the lack of content and interaction for us here being in the States yeah. uh, with the Irish language has left a huge uh, gap that I keep trying to fill with finding more content producers and more people out there trying to connect my Instagram account to as many people who are putting out content as I can. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I found her. Um, I think she's mostly on Instagram. Yeah. yeah mostly on Instagram. And she yeah. has, she puts up a, a wide variety of things. Like she's big into fashion and mm -hmm. she put up some Irish grammar tips. It, it's just, it's just a great, interesting uh, Instagram page she has. Um, yeah. Nine Arrow. Have you heard of Nine Arrow? You no, might not have heard, I, ha this I haven't is, heard of that one. This might be a more of a niche one, but basically okay. nine as in the number nine and arrow as in the things Robin Hood used to use. So mm -hmm. she does beautiful artistic uh, sketches and frames mm. and things like that. Okay. So she she's on Instagram and on Facebook and you'll find some wonderful pictures there. Um, so if you could find like a beautiful sketch of a fox, for example, and then underneath mm -hmm. it could be Shunok or Majorua. Ah, so okay. beautiful. Nine nine arrow, yeah. great great channel. Catherine uh, is her name. Catherine Catherine Gini, I think it is. Um, on Shop Allower then has is is great. It just it's basically a bookshop online on Shop Allower mm -hmm. on Instagram and um, Facebook. Um, I think yeah. there's a brand new Irish English Irish dictionary coming out very soon as well. So that'll be a big launch from them. Like oh, the nice. first new dictionary in maybe 20, 30 years. Like you know, it's been updated a lot. So that's yeah. one to keep an eye on. But another another one as well is the the last one I'd say on this is a couple of years ago, well, thirteen years ago now I think in two thousand and seven, a very very funny and very very famous comedian who you might know and I'm not sure if you do, um, a comedian called Des Bishop. Mm -hmm. Do you know who he is? Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. Know do you know where I'm going with this? I think so. I think so. He repeated his or he did his leave and search um, in Irish. He actually went to my school. In Wexford, oh, and he wow. was a couple of years. Okay. He's a couple of years ahead of me now. He did his leaving start in '96, I think, and I did mine '98. Yeah. So I never knew him, but uh, his series on going back and learning the Irish language because I think he got an exemption in school because he came from America, I think. So he, did, he goes yeah, back. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, uh, he goes back and does the whole process of the leaving cert and he talks about various aspects of it and the challenges he has learning it, how he feels about the language. Mm -hmm. And eventually I think he does a stand up gig off Gaelga as well, which is which is he great. Does, yeah. So <laughs> anybody out there that's looking for a bit of a fun way to look at somebody starting their journey on the Irish language, just just look at he, just type in Des Bishop and he adds so much answer. humor to it. He really yeah. does. Um yeah. yeah, so the um I think the the series I've actually got it saved. I need to save it to this channel, but I think it's on my personal yeah. channel. Uh but it's in the name of the father. That's yeah, thank you. That's yeah. the name. I was it, I was it was on the tip of my yeah. tongue there, yeah. In the name of the father. <laughs> um so father uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Fada F A D A uh, is the little accent mark um, yeah. means long, but it's the little accent mark that you put on uh, a vowel to make it a long sounding vowel. Um, so yeah, he played on words there. So in the name of the father. So, yeah, it's um, very, very funny. And yeah. I, I think the way he articulates his journey, a lot of people will be able to relate to it if they're mm. learning Irish or if they've done the leaving cert. And even if you haven't yeah. done the leaving start, don't worry. Watch it anyway. It's just, it's just fantastic. Like I've, I found myself a little bit jealous of his immersion. Yeah. That he had because I mean that would be something that somebody who really wants to learn the language here would be so ecstatic about. But it's yeah. very hard to find. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, and maybe, and maybe one day there will be something. Um, I have Hopefully. heard up north there are more like immersion weekends. And things that people do occasionally, maybe once or twice a year. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's still up north. Maybe there'll be some down yeah. here eventually. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. And um, so, and last but not least, you know, where can people find you online if they want to find your content? Well, I'm on YouTube anyway. So if you touch it, if you just type in "Learn Irish" on YouTube, mm -hmm. I should come up at or near the top. I also have a Facebook page called Irish Place Names, where mm -hmm. I post about. Irish place names, like I said about Loch Gorman and 
bit of Irish. I, I basically give the anglicized name, like the, the name that we have in English, and then I will explain what the name is in Irish and give a bit of history and background into some of the Irish place names. Because as I said, it's, it's, it's a very um, interesting journey if you actually learn about the history of Irish place names and how they came to be um the name that they're how, how they are what they are basically it's, it's a very interesting journey mm -hmm. so on youtube yeah um i'm on twitter as well i wouldn't use twitter as much now just day and tie on twitter uh but basically mm -hmm. on on youtube and on facebook uh so youtube learn irish facebook irish place names people can also email me by the way okay. just day and tie at gmail.com if, if they want to get in touch or if they have any questions okay awesome yeah um and so i highly recommend uh speaking to anybody watching this i highly recommend to take a look at his videos um he has a very good way of breaking things down into small digestible bites for people to learn uh, so that's really always really good um and i know here on this channel a lot of our stuff is longer uh since it has like a lesson pdf and everything so sometimes going to a channel that has the the smaller bites of information can be really, really helpful. So um, so thank you very much. I guess we'll wrap up. Um, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Ta, uh, oops, I'm forgetting every word. Tatu fear of weak team. You're very grateful to me, aren't you? Yeah, Gaurav Mila Markets, yeah. Mila Falcher wrote, and thank you for, for inviting me on and I just want to say if any of your learners have any questions, email me daintai, D-A-N-E-T-Y-G-H-E at gmail.com or you can just comment on any of my uh, YouTube videos and I'll answer any questions you have. And I just want to say congratulations to you. You're you're doing wonderful work there. I love some of the videos. I, I've seen some of your videos and I love them. I think your pronunciation is excellent and I just oh, wish you, you continued success and continued good luck on everything you do. All right. Thank you. And I wish you the same for your channel as well. The more content, the better out there. So you said it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you.